So I'm just reading on your your card here, Clive. It says, par from afar. Yeah. My challenge to go from hacker to scratch golfer in 12 months in aid of the Bobby Moore Fund for Cancer Research is fantastic. Right. Yeah. Uh, what was the inspiration to, to begin this, this journey, this challenge? Well, sadly, I've got two family, two close family members that are, that are um, suffering the effects of cancer at the moment. Uh, I wanted to do something that was um, genuinely exceptional, uh, try something completely different with my life. So I conceived the, uh, the challenge over a period of about nine months and just decided that uh, I wanted to see how good I could get at golf. I can play golf um, long into, into my retirement years, but I wanted to see just how good I could get if I did nothing but focus on golf for one year. I know that I was speaking to one of the guys here from Orchid yesterday, uh, and there's certain forms of cancer that golfers generally don't suffer from. You know? Golf, not many golfers get melanoma, those kinds of things. I think Arnold Palmer had prostate cancer. That was kind of about it, really. Obviously, Seve had his, his terrible tumour, and sadly, he's no longer with us. Uh, but I think that, that's fantastic. So had, before you started the journey, had you, had you played, you obviously played golf, or you played golf before? Yeah, I have played golf. Um, I learned to play when I was um, 11 or 12, but I never, I never um, played really regularly. Um, I got more into football and tennis and other sports. I went back to golf when I was at university briefly, um, but as soon as I started work, I played um, very, very rarely indeed, maybe once or twice a year. The last couple of years I probably played more than I'd ever played before, but that was still never more than once a week. And to be honest, uh, I would always struggle to break 100. Okay. Okay, so uh, how far are you into the journey now? Okay, right now I've just passed the five-month stage. So I started in earnest on the 6th of June this year, and so I'm just past my five-month stage. Okay, and what have you achieved so far? Okay, um, I play out of um, Nisel's Golf Course in Kent, just outside Seven Oaks in Kent. My control round I played on the 3rd of June, that was without any coaching or any um, interference at all. It was just to, to ascertain my baseline level. And I went round that golf course in 106 strokes. Last week, um, I shot my best round so far, which was 80. So in five months, I've taken 26 strokes off my best at the time. And uh, I believe you had a little bit of success yesterday, played at your home club yesterday. Yeah, indeed. I, I, won, I won my first... Um, money playing golf uh, yesterday I entered because I've not submitted cards yet because of the nature of the handicap system it's not in my interest to submit cards just yet so it's difficult for me to actually play in genuine competition conditions so the one thing that I can play in is called the swindle um, and there's a separate swindle handicap that is run by, by the members <clears throat> so playing off a handicap of 18 which in fairness makes me a bit of a bandit but nonetheless playing off 18 yesterday um, I shot 83 yesterday, <clears throat> which is my best competition round so far. Uh, and it, I think, shows that there's a degree of consistency that I'm achieving. I mean, my, my improvement curve is obviously very, very steep. Um, and obviously, sometimes I go backwards. I'm shooting in the 90s, etc. But the fact that I shot 80 a week ago and I've just shot 83 again, I'm continuing to improve consistently. And to be honest, I wasn't really hitting the ball that well yesterday. I think it's really interesting, you know. Knowing when you when you begin to look at the figures uh, and study it, there's, uh, in terms of the percentage of golfers that ever break 80, okay, you're looking at only three percent. Okay, so three percent of golfers. For all you guys out there, maybe shoot mid 80s. Yes, three percent of golfers break 80. I just stop. That. Okay, that's 42, 40, 42 million plus golfers on the planet. And only 3% of those will ever break 80. So you're already approaching a very elite band of golfers. You know, the, the, the players who play on tour make up you know, less than 1% of the golfing population. You yeah. know, everybody uses them as their benchmark. So you're already moving into that band, which is fantastic. I mean, I, I'm under no illusions whatsoever about just how ridiculously difficult this challenge is that I set for myself. I'm perfectly well aware that... that 
if I have that quality of golf in me to be playing consistent par or slightly better than par golf, which is what I know that I'm going to need to be doing, I know exactly how hard that's going to be. If I don't have that quality of golf in me, because I'm perfectly well aware of the natural talent, etc., that's necessary, my aim is to achieve the best possible handicap that I can this year. But let's be under no illusions, I would not have started this challenge if I didn't believe in my heart of hearts that I have par or sub-par golf in me. So, so how can people, uh, in, in terms of raising money for the charity, how do people get involved in helping you uh, raise the money? Okay, there are a few ways. As well as playing golf, the two things that I do in my life at the moment are play golf and write about playing golf. I've got a website that I write to daily. It's called parfromafar.com. There are cards that I put around the stage here that have got the, the, the details of the website on there. So what I ask people to do is to follow my progress, the trials and tribulations of what I'm going to be up to over the coming seven months, and just enjoy reading about the, the, the successes and the setbacks that I have. There's a link from my website to a Just Giving site that I've set up. So depending on how, how well you think I've done or how much you enjoy reading about my efforts over the next seven months, you have the ability then to donate directly through the website to a Just Giving site, which will go directly to the Bobby Moore Fund for Cancer Research. Through the website, there are also details as to how you can donate directly using mobile phones via text. And I'm also just in the process at the moment of organising um, a couple of charity golf days, both through Nysel's Golf Course, where I'm based, and also through Linkfield Park, which will be in March. So whatever, whatever's going on with my challenge, there'll also be the opportunity to turn up and play golf as part of a, a, a well-organised charity golf day, potentially watch some racing as well as part of that package, and support the charity that way too. Have you got dates set yet for the charity days? No, the dates aren't set yet for the charity days, but there'll certainly be one that's taking place in March time, and there'll be a, a mop-up date um, sometime around the beginning of June, because my challenge will be complete on the 6th of June. That is the 12 months um, date. But the, date, the, the dates will be announced through my website over the coming few weeks. And uh, the, the people can get the information about prizes and the, the format it'll, it'll of the charity there through the website. There'll be, a set, there'll be a separate page set up specifically giving information about the charity golf days that I'll be running. And I presume you're not just embarking on this challenge on your own. I'm presuming you've got help from coaches and people to, to help with your guidance yes. every step of the way. Um, I've got a, um, a, a coach that's giving me um, uh, a lot of his time because of the charity nature of what I'm doing. The, the, the golf course that I play at are giving me the use of their facilities. Um, the, the coach that I'm using, I'm seeing two or three times a week very regularly. I've also got people helping me with podiatry, with my diet, with my gym routine. Um, I've got the use of um, Hilden Park um, driving range. So I've got a wide, range of, a, a wide range of people that are giving me their time and their services free of charge to give me every chance of actually achieving what I'm trying to do. And that's great, you're getting so much support from everyone, which is fantastic. Yeah. I couldn't have asked for anything more. I, I, I'm from Tunbridge Wells in Kent, and I wanted to keep my challenge as, as local as possible. So to have had the support that I've had from people um, around and about where I'm based is fantastic. So when is your, your next venture on the golf course to measure progress? Um, I'll be playing a scoring round again tomorrow. Um, what I'm doing now to, to, um, to become as comfortable as possible with the competition golf that I'm going to need to play, I'm going to be playing three or four... Um, pseudo competition rounds per week so going out on the course playing 18 holes with just one ball and a score card in hand because it's very important that I get used to the pressure of playing just with that one ball um, I've done a lot of practice you know where I'm dropping balls and I'm playing better ball and worse ball and various different scoring games when I'm going around the course but the the um, the, 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 the success of my project will be determined by how well I can cope with the pressure of going around a golf course consistently with one ball on or around par. So that's what I'm practicing at the moment. Three or four rounds a week. Absolutely fantastic. Well, Clive, I can... I'm total admiration for what you're embarking on. I know from my own journey to become a golf professional was, was particularly challenging, but it was very, very much fun as well. And I think one thing, if you can maintain that go out and enjoy it then you'll achieve as far as I'm concerned you're a winner already from embarking on it 
and any money you raise will be fantastic. So uh, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to come and speak to here as, at the golf show today. Thank you. If there's anything we can be of assistance of, please let us know. Uh, Alps is certainly keeping track of your, your journey. Uh, is there anything you'd like to leave the people with just before you go? The only thing that I'd like to, to, to say before I go is that me talking to you on stage here is not really about how well I do on the golf course. That's, that's my personal challenge. I'm here because um, I'm doing this in aid of the Bobby Moore Fund for Cancer Research. So if nothing else, please take a card, jump onto my website, follow my progress, see how I do, and donate to the charity because this is about raising funds and awareness for cancer research. So please take a card and support the, support the charity. Clive, thank you very much. Enjoy your rest of the day here at the show. I'm sure there'll be many people who'd like to help you with different things as well. Uh, and thanks for dropping by, and I'll certainly be following your progress. Thank you Ladies and gentlemen, Clive Ralph. Thank you.